you're streaming, so let's count down to Studio 9. Yes, you heard it right, Studio 9. <laughs> well, <laughs> we are experimenting with some new things, and thank you for bearing with us. Good evening. I'm Coach Prasic, and this is PJNet.TV. It is the second Tuesday of the month, and that is the time that we celebrate the appearance of the one and only Jake McCandless. And we're going to have to skip some of the, the niceties, because uh, the, the pleasantries, because... Uh, we are running a few late, getting all a few minutes late, getting all this stuff. Jake, uh, not only am I hurry scurry, it turns out that you have a, a actual life outside of hanging around with. Uh, well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to know. I was on time tonight. It wasn't yeah, me tonight. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, that's this one's on you, me. Usually sir. it is. <laughs> um, your life is getting complicated, so complicated that you almost forgot that uh, you have a book coming out. <laughs> you had one come out, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's just the, the lowdown of what uh, some things you wanted to share tonight, and then I had to send you another one. Oh, yeah, well, yeah I got, had oh, a book yeah. out. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so uh, both. I have one that is coming available for pre release, uh, we believe, next Monday. And so it's a devotional book called Four Uncertain Times. Uh, could you could you find a better? Yeah, there it is. Could you find something better? Oh, and I sent you the wrong one. That's the uh, oh. <laughs> go figure. I, I got it together, right? No, it's a uh, but that is uh, that you are having a day. Way, that. Yeah, that is me. That's all me then. Uh, that, that's the right cover. It's just one that's going with the companion journal with it. So we got a journal coming out as well. Uh, but yeah, no. So uh, four uncertain times, as you can see, the capital burning, uh, and uh, so yeah, that's coming. It was due out March first, and so what we do in this devotional book, we're me and Rita Halter Thomas are working through all the times God's people have been in nat national distress. So when we we find Israel in Egypt in captivity in in slavery, when we find Assyria invading. Uh, the northern tribes and Judah, we find them, you know, in exile in Babylon. We find them in the Persian Empire. We find them under Roman occupation. And then we see as, you know, throughout Christian history, what Christians have faced. And so we had, I mean, we've done this a year and a half ago. We started uh, writing this and getting it was due out March 1st. And so, but because it describes what to deal with just national chaos, uh, we decided to, go, let's do what we can to make it available early. And so we're, it's coming available for pre-release, uh, pre-orders for pre-release on uh, this Monday, and it will be shipped out uh, before Christmas. I think December the 18th is that date, and uh, so excited about that. And uh, and with that, I had a book come out on Election Day. Obviously, that wasn't the top news on anybody's <laughs> radar, right? Terrible, <laughs> terrible day uh, for, for release. And total another subject. Uh, this is called uh, Show Me Small Town Missouri. And so I got to do the uh, diners, driving and dives thing across Missouri, 90 small towns under 15,000. Uh, best eats, uh, best things to do, best place to stay. That was a blast. And so that is out now. Very cool, very cool book. It's got all, uh, beautiful pictures, amazing pictures. Uh, some of them I actually took and then uh, worked with some professional photographers on some of them as well. But <laughs> a very, very cool uh, book coming out from, uh, from the University of Indiana, uh, Corey Press. So uh, Corey Books. Really cool there. So, yeah, a lot, a lot going on with that. Oh, and uh, we have some unfinished business, I believe, from last week. Uh, Fallen Angels, or last yeah. month. Yeah. Like, yeah, we left on a cliffhanger, right? Oh, yeah. So, You're killing me. <laughs> so so you mentioned uh, you mentioned this a couple of times, me and Sherilyn doing this uh, show on, thir oh, no. on Fridays. Fridays at noon called Talking Stand Firm. So I teach on Thursday nights, Thursday night teaching, and I've been working through – the conferences I, w I was doing in churches around the country, I did these two-part con uh, two conferences, a series of nine of them. And so we actually are on the ninth one. So this coming Thursday, I will finish it out. It's actually session three of the two-part uh, uh, ninth <laughs> conference. <laughs> so, and then we're going to cycle back through them and, and start at number one the, the following week. So we do that on Thursday night. And then on Fridays, we do 
just a call in, text in, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live show where you can ask questions, ask comments. It's really cool because I'm talking prophecy, I'm talking this stuff, and Sherilyn, who is a great student of the Bible, but not so tracking in the prophecy stuff, so she gets to say, hey, Jake, that made no sense. Can you explain <laughs> that again? Uh, and then we, we have guests. We had, we've had some fantastic guests. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had uh, Carl Gallup's uh, multiple uh, you know, best-selling author, uh, and we've got uh, Joel Richardson, New York Times best-selling author, coming up November the 27th. Uh, Marky Laughlin just uh, will be on in two weeks. Uh, just really, really cool guests. And, and the way we're able to get in discussion with them, it's just really cool hearing some topics talked about on, on a very interesting angle and, and level. So that's been going on uh, for quite a while, <laughs> but it just really picked up steam the last two weeks uh, because there, a news channel called Armageddon News has a, a huge YouTube channel, YouTube following, huge uh, Facebook channel. Uh, have, has picked us up to be on there. And so that's been a really cool opportunity. Uh, it's based out of South Africa, but of course it, it connects with a lot of people here in the States. And so it's been a really big opportunity. We went from, you know, you know how it is, you know, is anybody going to watch this? Mom, thank <laughs> for watching to, oh my goodness. Uh, we're not, the first night we switched over, we had 99 questions, 91, excuse me, 91 questions uh, <laughs> come in that night and, and so, no you know, answers we're okay to get and a, few, a handful so uh it totally escalated overnight all right well so you're with all that you're yeah, you're, with all, what a terrible setup it's totally not made for radio uh but so <laughs> the question was a, a few weeks ago we taught i, I was teaching through uh that in the end times we know that there's gonna be a rise in the supernatural the, the unseen world the fallen world spiritual realm uh, we, we see that Revelation 9, we've got angels who are buried under the river Euphrates, released. We've got uh, angel, these demon things coming out of the abyss. And you're reading along in Revelation 9, you're like, what in the world? Where, where is this just, this is crazy. Where did it come from? Uh, but when the Apostle John wrote it, and when the first century believers heard it, it was not that stretch because they had a foundation that would have already put angels bound underground they already had a foundation it would have put demons in the abyss and unfortunately we have a very skewed i think uh understanding of the spiritual world and that that comes because uh, we just it's pretty much just been based on tradition and I, i've been really challenged i've really been really pushed to, to dig into it so with that one of the things that i dropped this bomb last time was is that demons and fallen angels are not the same and that, no, I can't pull one verse that says demons and fallen. But but think think through it. Are they ever treated the same? When we see angels appear, it's always in the form of a man, right? And then you know it's it's or some organic, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's something. And then the demons need a body to host, and I mean ah. very very differently in how they're they're presented, you know, right. or they're, they're you know, and so we, we get those clues. But there's a foundation for that, and the foundation is, and so uh, going back to, you know, we, we have, of course, we have the Bible, but we also have some other books, uh, you know, for our Catholic brothers and sisters there who uh, have the bonus books. I mean, as I, I call them, we have these books that were written, uh, you know, around at the time of Christ uh, that maybe didn't make the cut necessarily to make the, the canon, but still are quoted in the Bible. One of them is the Book of Enoch. It's quoted, I, I think, over... I think 61 times in the New Testament. And in the book of Enoch and then a few others of the, these writings, this you know, in, in you know, traditional Judaism that we see these writings, it lays out a foundation for this. And the foundation is is Genesis 6, 1 through 4, uh, where we find this crazy scene where it says the sons of sons of God came and married sons of uh, daughters of men, and they had these offspring that were the Nephilim or giants. These were the men of renown. Uh, and now there's different views of what that is. Uh, I, the, the views are, one, that these, the two lines were uh, the sons of God were the, the descendants of Enoch, uh, godly de descendants I mean, excuse me, godly descendants of Seth. Excuse me, they were, we'll get out in a minute. And the daughters of men being the uh, descendants of Cain and that they, they married. And but that, and that's, that's the predominant view out there. That's what I was taught in seminary uh but it really it's not the traditional view it's not what's been held by christians for years and unfortunately it doesn't really it doesn't answer anything because okay what's the big deal about their offspring uh there's no place in scripture where they were forbidden to marry 
Uh, another one is is that this talks about that there were kings that day just married all the women they wanted to. And again, there, there's no uh, precedence for that within Scripture. But there is a precedence uh, for the, what was always the, the traditional view and that these were angels who rebelled, came down, 200 of them made this oath at Mount Her Hermon, that came down, uh, married, you know, produced offspring with uh, human women, and those offspring, the word Nephilim, which we see also in Numbers 13, as giants. So you have these these giants as Nephilim. It says men of then it goes men of renown, which I, I believe that that statement is saying this is where we get the mythologies. That and so this idea. So you had fallen angels, and uh, through the Book of Enoch, we find that they are bound uh, underground. They are uh, captured and bound underground. And then the Nephilim, their descendants, uh, continue on. And then you have multiple generations of that. And then when the flood came, well, before that, the book of Enoch talks about there's a civil war between them. Flood comes, so the, all of these die. Uh, and then their spirits become demons, what we know as demons today. And so the, the background, the Jewish background of that in the first century, the background that... Uh, and, and we find that story quoted in, in Jude. We find it quoted in, in Second Peter. And so it sounds so wild. So, but, you know, virgin birth pretty wild too, you know. <laughs> and so a very wild thing. So the, the foundation that would have had in, you know, and just to throw this bomb out and something like this out there like this is, tough, is wild. But uh, the, this tradition is that and that they've held, again, that these demons would have been the spirit of the Nephilim. And then you have fallen angels. So you have the separate entities. Well, what's also also amazing about this, the Book of Enoch, when the, these angels uh, rebelled, they also one of the things they did was they 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 taught what they called secrets of the heavens, and it was things such as warfare and weaponry and uh, makeup and jewelry, these things that talk talks about. And each different angel taught one specific thing. And what I believe it does is it says, you know, I think in Christianity today we we look at mythologies that are out there that you know every civilization had these pantheons of gods. And they're all similar in a lot of ways, yet mm -hmm. we say, you know, they, they just made all this stuff up, uh, which I, I believe that the foundation of all of this goes back to what we see in Genesis 6, this incident from Mount Hermon. And so, therefore, there, there is a basis of, of the mythologies out there. Well, Jake, um, the chat room is picking up on the fact that you're just <laughs> very excited that, huh? uh, about. Now, I, I want you to sip your coffee a minute. I want to go back about... 40 years you weren't okay. around then i'm sure but i'm no. going to tell you a story oh, that's oh, about oh. 40 years old i worked at a radio station and among other things i uh recorded uh the high school football game on friday night and on one of these little you would have no idea but there were these handheld recorder things that had a little tape inside of them and uh, anyway um yeah. And then I would take that and produce it. I would go to the radio station, uh, get there about midnight, and then throughout the evening, the morning, uh, from midnight till about four, five, six, whatever, I would produce this program, which aired the next morning. Well, a funny thing happened one night. I was producing this, and the power went out at the radio station. Now, the radio station was housed uh, in a shopping center. You know, there was Win Dixie down on the corner where you could run. Get yeah. you. Anyway. And uh, so the studio, there were no windows, so I went out uh, into the hallway uh, the, and just kind of just sat there. And I was shocked when I see a flashlight coming down the hallway from the back door entrance. And I heard a click and a familiar voice said, hold it right there. And then he said, hey, Mark, what are you doing up here? That was a police officer. The, before I had gotten there, there was a jewelry store next door to us. Someone had tried to break into the jewelry store and pried open the wrong door, <laughs> found they were in the radio station. I didn't know the back door was flung open. <laughs> and that police officer showed a great deal of professionalism in, not, in drawing his weapon and showing restraint. His name was... Carl Gallops. No way. No way. No <laughs> way. How crazy is that? Carl today is, uh, well, he's just a, a good friend of viewers and a, a partner, I guess, in so many ways, a collaborator. Yeah. 
uh, in ministry, and he will be appearing, uh, or it says here, October 30th. That would be in time. Yeah, so we just, we just had him, So, uh, <laughs> but it was a huge show for us. Well, you, you have, you know, and you're on PJ Net, and in addition to that, it doesn't stop there. Uh, coming up November 27th, Joel Richardson. Tell us about Joel. Yeah, Joel, Joel's written some amazing stuff. New York Times bestselling author. His book, The Islamic Antichrist, you can see it pictured there in the, the corner there. Uh, was a huge, When it came out, it, it laid out this understanding that really changed how we have viewed the in antichrist final empire uh and just it was one of the most biblical people I, i've ever been around as far as his writings i tell people even if you don't come to the conclusion he comes with stuff just get his books because it's going to have the whole <laughs> argument there uh but oh, okay he, again fantastic teacher but his latest book is called uh from sinai to zion and in that he talks about there's more to the return uh than we just you know we, in our minds, we, we go to Ze Zechariah, Jesus appears on the Mount of Olives, boom, that's, that's it. But if you go back to that, that text, it says his feet will touch but he, there, but it doesn't say that's where he lands. And there's actually a lot of biblical evidence. This is wild, coming up from Sinai, coming the same path that they would have taken the Promised Land. Very, very interesting study. Uh, but along with that, uh, he's just recently been one of the, the first to be able to go into Saudi Arabia. And, you know, we have two different uh, projected places that Sinai is that's in the Sinai Peninsula or in Saudi Arabia. And he's part of a team that archaeological team who d found some amazing things there. So it's very cool thing. So excited to have him on the show. <laughs> okay. Well, I presume now you and Carl are pretty buddy, buddy, I think. Yeah. Carl, Carl was the first one to uh, endorse spiritual prepper. Been a, been a great, great supporter and encourager. Okay. Well, if you have your cell phone number, tell him to call me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe maybe we we could have him on the or now that we've got this new set this new uh gig here we could have carl over here and you over there um, there you go something there like you, that there or, you go absolutely you know, there's a lot we can do um jake let's see i we we want to give you a little extra time we were late getting started um so many people with all of the events of the past few days are proclaiming the rapture the end times uh i wanted to wait until the end because we only have a couple of minutes because you will talk two hours on this topic <laughs> but do you have a comment uh, are, no, the, not, not in the are some of the things happening in the political landscape indicative of end times uh, yes but not like we, we think uh I, I, again the, the place to watch is, is the middle east i think especially turkey uh and iran and what we see in Turkey, I mean, they are bent on bringing back the Ottoman Empire. They have a 2023 plan to bring that back. To me, that's where the focal point is. Talk to you about the election. Uh, so when God really got a hold of me in this prophecy world, and I wrote Spiritual Prepper, started to stand firm, uh, 2015, 2016, and the climate at that time politically, I mean, that was when we were seeing bakers and florists and you know, mm -hmm. wedding venue people uh, right. sued for, for not doing same-sex weddings. You were seeing that the fire chief in Atlanta was fired because of uh, a pamphlet he wrote against same-sex marriage with, you know, pastors in Houston were subpoenaed. And I think, and I'm, I'm in churches every week, you know, speaking on the religious liberty and these things, and you could feel the tension. And then Trump was elected and boom, it just, it just changed. I mean, everybody's like, oh, it's good now. And, and everybody quit worrying about that and things. And, and then, you know, in my you know, the, the Lord leading those things. I didn't understand because it was just like overwhelming. These things are coming, Jake. You need to get out and share. And then it's like, poof, it's it's cool again. And it's like, ah, did I hear this stuff right? Did I, I go down the right the right path? And, and you know, I think, who, who knows? I, I think the election decision and all that's far from over. And uh, we've got a lot to tread until that point. But I, uh, we if there is an administrative change, uh, I, I think we've forgotten where that was in in regards to religious liberty and i'm not, and we need to get to the point where we're we're secure in our faith that that's not going to be shaken with those type things and i think that's something that could be on the radar if there is administration change and there's going to be at least in a you know there will be in four years not now so, <laughs> there yeah. will be in four years i guarantee you yeah for sure um, so i mean i think that's something we, we definitely need to keep but uh I, we, I think we've had a blessed reprieve 
it was at least four years in, in regards to religious liberty and whether it's extended we'll see okay all right well jake it's been a fun night tonight but we've got to make room for dell didway yeah and uh, congratulations on all of your new stuff and thank you for sharing it with us uh here on pjnet.tv and uh, by this time uh, when we see you next time you will have made numerous book sales as a result of appearing on this program that's right uh, and you can present uh pjnet.tv with the royalty check uh there unto so that uh, yeah, what's a royalty check? I'm not sure what a royalty <laughs> hadn't, check Hadn't seen one of those. All right. Appreciate it, uh, Jake. Okay, atop the studios here at the PJ Net Eagle's Nest. There you see it live, and I see that Dell is uh, jumping on board. It's just a moment, a few moments from now. We will be enjoying Dell Didway right here on pjnet.tv. As I leave, I ask you to ask yourself two important questions.